Centre Pays. What's up YouTube, Visual Gaming Network, and welcome to episode 4 of our Jetpack Joyride game in Java tutorial. Last episode, we implemented our dimensions into our game, and I gave you guys an explanation of what inheritance in Java is. This episode, we're going to be creating something that pretty much every game needs, a frame. So I'm going to dive right into this episode. Uh, first of all, we need to create the main method for our game. So what we need to, need to make a main method is, in Java and even tons of tons of other languages whenever we first run our game uh, our program looks for our main method and the main method is the first code that gets called when we run our game so uh, remember like in our constructor if we create a game object then uh, these line then the code in the constructor is the first lines of code that gets called when we create a game object well our main method is like a constructor but for our whole entire project so when we run our game uh, the code in the main method is the first are uh, the first lines of code that get called and uh, if we don't have our main method then our game will simply not run so the main method for our Java game is compulsory now I don't think I've explained this but uh, constructors for objects isn't compulsory you can uh, have a uh, no constructor for our game class and we can still make a game object uh, making constructors for classes uh, is optional but making the main method for your game is compulsory which means you have to do it so to create our main method uh, our method will be a public static method and uh, the type of method will be a void and uh, I don't think I've explained this before so I'll explain it now uh, what pretty much void is is that it returns nothing let's say if we create an uh, int method then uh, we have to return an int so let's call it let's I'm just gonna make an example public static int inti, integer and uh, let's say we made a method called integer as you see we get an error because uh, if we make an integer method we have to the end result has to be an integer so to return an integer at the end of the method simply type return then whatever integer or int uh, you want to return and uh, we can actually use that to create variables so let's say we can actually set width to integer so we can make public static final into width equals integer and what that will do is that it will actually set our int our width not integer width it will set our width to uh, whatever integer returns and because integer returns zero it'll set our width equal to zero and we can do that and uh, it doesn't have to be ints it can actually be strings it and we have to you know uh, return a string it can be a boolean and we have to uh, return a boolean, true or false. Uh, but a void, pretty much we have to return nothing. All void does is that executes the code inside of the method and that's it. It doesn't have to return anything. So our main method will be a public static void method. And uh, because I call the main method a main method, uh, our public static void will be, will be called main. And uh, by the way, I remember how I said last episode that uh, our constructors can have parameters like int one or something. Uh, methods can actually have uh, parameters too. It doesn't matter if it's a void method, an int method, a string method, a boolean method. Pretty much every type of method can have parameters just like constructors. But like constructors, it's also optional. It's just, that's why we don't get an error when we don't put in any parameters for our main method. Now, we haven't actually finished our main method yet. Uh, to make our main method the main method for our uh, project, all we have to do is in the parameters, we type string, then uh, put square brackets. I'm not going to explain it because it's not that important. And then uh, we want to call it args. So it's creating... A string array called args we don't need to really worry about what arrays are at the moment 
I'll explain arrays in a future episode when they are more important to what we're doing at the moment. So yeah, by the way, just to create an array, uh, let's say if you wanted to create a string array, after string, you'll put some square brackets if you wanted to create an in array, you'll put int, then square brackets, and so on for booleans and uh, other types of variables. So yeah, now we're going to test if our main method actually works. So now we're going to print out something in the console. To do that, you type system dot out. Okay, it was kind of loading there for a second. So system dot out dot print line. And because it's a statement, put a semicolon on the end. And then the brackets, uh, we're going to fill in a string parameter. And the string parameter would be what we want to uh, print out inside of our console here. So let's say we want to print out, hello world. So if this works, whenever we run our game, uh, our Java program should find our main method here. And uh, it would execute this line of code. So a string called hello world will be printed out into the console. So now, uh, to run your game, all you have to do is go to the top bar of your Eclipse here and uh, click on this little uh, green circle with an arrow inside it, a white arrow, and that's the uh, run button. So, hit run. And there you go. As you can see, that a string called hello world has been printed out into the console, which means uh, our main method thing has worked. Um, we can actually run our game and it will do something. So yeah, and by the way, uh, to close your program, you simply click uh, one of those X buttons here. It doesn't really matter which one you click. So yeah, now I'm going to remove this system.out.printline line thing. And now in our main method, we're going to actually create a game object. Well, we're going to create two objects. One would be something called a game object, and one would be something called a JFrame object. So first we'll create our game object. And uh, if you remember from yesterday, the way to create an object is you type what sort of object you want to create first, then you give the name to your object, and you set that equal to a new then game or whatever object uh, you're making. Uh, put some uh, curly, no, not curly brackets, just normal brackets, then put a semicolon on the end as the line of code is a statement. And uh, if you have to fill in a parameter, uh, for your object, then fill in the parameters. Now we're going to create a JFrame object. Now a JFrame is pretty much a frame, like a normal game frame, but like in Java. So, yeah, nothing too in depth there. So we'll create a JFrame object. Let's call our JFrame object frame. I'll set that equal to a new JFrame, of course. And uh, we get an error because if you remember, uh, last episode we needed to import a dimension because it was a class that existed outside of our package we need to do the same for JFrame so you uh, put your mouse over the error and click import JFrame or you can do control shift O or command shift O if you're on a Mac like me so now for our JFrame object we can actually give our frame a title and to do that uh, we can actually fill in an optional string parameter for our JFrame. Like I remember uh, last episode I talked about uh, you can have multiple constructors for an object. Well, there's multiple constructors for a JFrame and two of them is obviously a one with uh, no parameters at all which is the one we're using right now but another one that uh, takes in a string and that'll be the title for our frame. So all I have to do to set the title for our frame is uh, uh, fill in a string parameter for our JFrame. So let's call our JFrame a Jetpack Joyride Tutorial. So now, just because we've created our JFrame object, it doesn't mean we've actually made our JFrame visible and like we can see it. Uh, the object is there, but it's pretty much not doing anything, so it technically hasn't created an actual frame yet. So we're going to do that right now. Uh, under our objects we're going to call a method in our in the jframe class in a non-static way and remember and if you remember accessing methods in a non-static way is uh, using uh, the name of an object and then uh, then using uh, then typing the whatever method you want to use so the first we the first method we're going to type is frame dot add non not add with 
not add window listener. What is this? So just frame dot add. And as you can see, we get an error because uh, for this frame dot add method, we have to fill in a parameter and the parameter has to be an object. So to fill in a parameter, we're going to use our game object that we created here. I don't really have a good explanation of this. Uh, there, there are better explanations out there, but I'll do my best to explain uh, how we're using this method. So what we're doing, we're pretty much, we're pretty much applying uh, whatever the lines of code in our game constructor does to our frame. So it's pretty much applying uh, these lines of codes to our frame object. So it's setting the preferred size, setting the minimum size, and setting the maximum size. Uh, so by typing frame dot add game, it's pretty much uh, setting all the preferred sizes, the minimum size and the maximum size for our frame. Now we haven't actually fully set the size for our frame yet by doing this. To like actually set the size for our frame, we have to type uh, under the line of code, by that I mean frame dot add. Under that we type frame dot pack. And what this does is actually it actually sizes our frame. So uh, frame dot add applies the uh, lines of code, so the setting preferred size, etc. And frame dot pack actually sizes our frame based on what we have applied to our frame. So yeah, now we're gonna do some other things. Uh, under frame dot pack we have to type frame dot set resizable and as you can see we get an error because set resizable is a boolean method so and because a boolean can ex exist in two states true or false we have to fill in a true or false parameter for our set resizable for our frame set resizable method so of course uh, setting set resizable equal to true will make it so we can actually resize our frame which is a good thing but we're going to actually set it to false because if we actually set our frame dot set resizable thing equal to true then when we resize our frame it's going to uh, cause graphical errors without optimizing that i'm not quite sure how to do so uh, maybe i'll learn how to optimize our game so we can actually resize our frame without any graphical errors in the future but for now just to be safe and not have any graphical errors we'll set our frames are resizable equal to false so now we're going to type frame dot sets location relative to null and if you don't know null pretty much means nothing it doesn't mean a variable it doesn't mean like a method or anything uh, null pretty much means nothing so when we s set our frames location relative to nothing what it pretty much does is uh, just uh, make set our frame's position to be on the middle of our screen. Now we're going to type something else. Frame dot set default close operation, and uh, we have to fill in a parameter for this method as well. And uh, the parameter will be jframe dot exit on close. And uh, notice how I accessed uh, our jframe's exit on close integer in a static way. And what this pretty much does is uh, make our frame close whenever we try to close our frame or press the little red X button on our frame. So uh, one more thing we have to do is that we want to actually see our frame, right? We want our frame to be visible. So to make our frame visible, we just type frame.setVisible and uh, a Boolean parameter we have to fill in. Uh, we're going to set it equal to true because, you know, we want to set our frame's visibility equal to true. Okay, so if everything has worked, then we should see our frame that we can move around and it has a Jetpack Joyride tutorial thing. And it should appear in the middle of our screen and uh, when we try to close it, it would close uh, normally. So uh, we'll click the uh, run button, we'll run our game. And there you go. As you can see that uh, we have created our frame. As you can see uh, at the top of our frame, it has our title and uh, yeah, our frame appeared in the middle of our screen like we wanted it to. Yeah, we can minimize our frame. And if we uh, try to close our frame, it would close like we wanted it to. So yeah, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. If someone you know is interested in learning how to program a game in Java, please let them know about this channel. If you have a Twitter account, 
please feel free to follow me on Twitter. So see you guys soon. Bye.